Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video with myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to kick things off with a couple of pieces from Intel and the first thing we're actually going to tackle here is some more information on these Cascade Lake AP. So you may recall that we actually had an unveiling of this particular processor line last week and they promised to give more details at Supercomputing 2018. So now we have some more information from Intel but a lot of it is just kind of a repeat of what we already know but let's just revisit this shall we. So obviously this is a Cascade Lake architecture refresh. Uh, it's going to be a package in MCP or multi-chip package design and will feature up to 48 cores and 96 threads per chip. We're going to be support for up to 12 DDR4 channels and also support for Optane DC memory and very dense capacity DIMMs. Now for the Optane DC persistent memory we'll see a feature capacity of up to 512 gigabytes. So this obviously when you pack all of these into a single server results in quite a lot of system memory to say the least. Now we did see some preliminary performance numbers from Intel last week. These were taken from a two socket server featuring two of the 48 core chips, which obviously is 96 cores and 192 threads over both of those chips. And I'm not going to go through the benchmarks that we saw last week, uh, so that we got some AMD and versus Xeon, but obviously as I said, reiterated when I covered this very same topic last week, this is the first generation Xeon, sorry not Xeon, the first generation Epic should I say, so how this new Cascade Lake AP does against Epic 2 or Rome as it's otherwise being called is definitely going to be one to pay attention to as soon as we do get some performance numbers for Epic 2. So we did have a bunch of Limpack and Stream Triad performance benchmarks last week, but now we have some more. We have some real world benchmarks where again they showed versus the first generation of Epic that it is up to 1.5 times faster than Epic, this obviously being the Cascade Lake AP in MILC, 1.6 times faster than Epic in WRF, 1.6 times faster than Epic in Open Foam, 2.1 times faster than Epic in NAMD, and 3.1 times faster than AMD Epic in Y-A-S-K. So again, that is first generation Epic. That is very, very important. As I already said, we, we have finally have a reveal of what exactly is going on with 7NM Zen, at least in terms of Rome. So I would love to see when the, the Rome CPU actually comes out or when we see some more performance numbers from AMD to pit it against the Cascade Lake AP to see what the story is when it comes to the newer generation. Now, as promised, I do have a bit of a statement here from Intel, where they say, quote, at Supercomputing 2018, Intel disclosed new performance results for next generation Cascade Lake advanced performance processors, a new class of Xeon scalable processors designed to support converged high performance computing and AI workloads. Available in the first half of 2019, Cascade Lake advanced performance processors are designed to accelerate applications in the field of physics, weather modeling, manufacturing, and life and material science. Processor features Intel DL Boost technology, which improves AI deep learning inference performance by up to 17 times compared with local, sorry, local, with Intel Xeon Platinum processor management at its 2017 launch. So that is our first Intel piece for today. I'm going to, of course, going to include a link to the Intel Newsroom article from which this information has been pulled. So do check out the description below this video if you wish to give that a read. But next up, we have some news regarding Intel's 5 G chip. So what they have actually announced here is they're bringing forward the launch of their new 5G modem called the XMM8160. Just rolls off the tongue as I'm sure you'll agree. And this isn't a, a, like a couple of weeks or even a month, it's actually going to be over six months earlier than expected. We weren't expecting it to arrive until 2020, so we're going to now be seeing it in the second half of next year. Now according to Intel's own statements we have a chip that will allow of speeds of up to 6 gbps which is three to six times faster than what we have at the moment in the latest and newest lte modems so obviously it's going to support 5g but it's also going to support 4g 3g and 2g as well unsurprisingly because not everyone's going to want to fork out for the extra 5g and you know it's going to cost a lot as well if you want to get that new and shiny 5g on your phone so, we have a bit of a statement here from Intel as well, which reads, quote, by advancing directly into a multi-mode solution, Intel will offer very clear improvements in power, size, and scalability. 
Intel's integrated multi-mode solution supports simultaneous connectivity ENDC for LTE and 5G. Critical as 5G mobile network devices must be backwards compatible to 4G if 5G is not available at any moment or at any location. Now they have showed a picture of this as well and it shows just how small this is as well and of course you're really enjoying that on screen. So while this is pretty cool that Intel have obviously found themselves ready to bring the launch of this forward a very impressive six months. Unfortunately, we're still not going to see you know, phones or tablets or anything like that actually fitted with this chip until the first half of 2020. So it gives, obviously, manufacturers of those devices a bit of a head start to get this chip sort of in there and all that sort of stuff. But we're not actually going to see it as a consumer in a consumer-level product until the first half of 2020. So you might wonder, why are they doing this? Well, it's probably due to Qualcomm and how it's doing with 5G and obviously Samsung and all the rest. I've got their eyes set on 5G as well. So Intel are obviously just trying to stay competitive in the mobile space here. Now, that's not the last thing I have for you from Intel today as we have something rather interesting regarding what they're up to in terms of the graphics department. Now, of course, we all know that they're releasing Arctic Sound and now Intel have opened up a graphics and hardware research center in India with 1,500 employees. It's pretty crazy, to be honest. Now, this information actually came to us via Twitter, thanks to one and only Raja Kadori, who, of course, left the pastures of AMD to go over to those of Intel. And he is really, really throwing his all into it. And he said on Twitter, quote, will be a major development center ideal as our Bangalore leadership is only one hop away and can help grow it to cover our graphics and throughput, computing, hardware and software ambitions. So essentially what their plan is, is to go big or go home in terms of research and development when it comes to graphics. And they are very much going after AMD and NVIDIA here in the graphics field. Now, Intel have been making a lot of moves in graphics recently. They have drastically updated their drivers to be more GeForce-like. You know, we have really, really seen in the graphics world just how important good driver support actually is. And, and when it comes to R&D, NVIDIA themselves have demonstrated the value of getting that research and development right. Uh, it can be the key between being the one who changes things and being the one who has to react to those changes. Now, of course, they have two GPUs lined up for the moment, as I already said, Arctic Sound, but also Jupiter Sound as well. But we know very, very little about Arctic Sound, which is going to be the first one. But as I say, these, this investment is pretty huge. As I say, you know, 1,500 employees is not exactly a small number, to say the least, and just shows that Intel is really, really not messing around when it comes to graphics cards. They are obviously keenly aware that AMD and NVIDIA have years of experience uh, ahead of them, and obviously they're, they're known in the graphics card space, they're reliable, all that sort of stuff. I'm not saying Intel aren't reliable, but obviously they're known for processors. That's what you think of when you think of Intel, you think processors. So they have definitely ground to recover there and they're very much aware of that which is primarily why they're probably going so hard on the research and development as well as what I already discussed you know and again in video themselves have demonstrated the value of getting that R&D right of making sure you put your money where it's important obviously Raja Kadori has experienced this firsthand if you believe the reports regarding what happened with AMD and Vega but regardless of all of that he knows his stuff and he also knows the value of that research and that development as well so it's going to be interesting to see the fruits of their labors but unfortunately it's not going to be until 2020 or even 2021 until we see hide or hear of either Arctic Sound or Jupiter Sound so it's going to be some time but uh, um, Intel are taking the gloves off let's just say that but we're going to move it from Intel over to Nvidia so this comes to us thanks to a website by the name of tabao.com whose name I probably just mispronounced so I do apologize but what they have actually done here is done a teardown of a GTX 1060 with a GDDR5X memory and well it reveals something rather critical about this particular refresh and it is basically now confirmed to have a GP104 GPU so essentially what we have here 
is a GTX 1080 with much fewer cores enabled, basically taking it down to a GTX 1060. And if you look at the pictures, which of course will be playing during this particular segment, you will see something rather interesting which has actually remained on the board itself, and that is the SLI fingers as well. But will they work? Unfortunately, I don't know, but we can see them there on the actual graphics card. So what we actually see here in terms of the pictures is an iGame GTX 1060 UTOMP version 2. Obviously, you can see it has three fans and dual 8-pin power connectors and an 8 plus 2 phase design. So that kind of answers the question of how NVIDIA managed to get a GTX 1060 with GDDR5X memory support. They took a 1080, crippled it and sold it as a 1060, essentially, to give you the TLDR of what exactly has been going on here. Now, of course, I have shown the pictures that are prudent to this particular segment, but if you want to see the source for this article, it is in the description below this video, so do check it out. There is a bunch more pictures there, and if you like seeing a photo of a nude graphics card, you dirty, dirty person, then go ahead and take a look. Anyway, let's move over, shall we, to our final topic for today. So what we actually have here is something to fuel the flames of rumour surrounding Sunset Overdrive coming to the PC. Now, you may remember last week we saw a listing for this particular game on the ESRB website. It also was spotted on the Steam database, of all things, but Microsoft have refused to actually confirm that, yep, this game is making its way to the PC platform. Platform. But briefly, and I do mean briefly, the game actually appeared for pre-order on Amazon for PC. Now, unfortunately, this is no longer the case. It is no longer available to pre-order, but you could actually pay cash money for it. And the guys that spotted this were actually PC Gamer, so a big thank you to them. And they also noticed that it was being published by THQ Nordic, which does make sense. They did things like the Record Definitive Edition on the PC. So then being handed um, the responsibility for porting Sunset Overdrive would make perfect sense. Now, I, for one, would actually be completely and utterly down with this. I really, really liked Sunset Overdrive. I know it wasn't for everyone, the humour wasn't for everyone, but it was silly and fun and just very bombastic and it was exactly what I wanted it to be, to be honest. I fire it up every now and again just for some mindless fun if I just want to just you know fly around the city on roller skates even though that I've got nothing on my feet that would give me that much speed anyway it was a very very fun game and I definitely want to see it come to PC and it was only listed for twenty dollars as well which is surprisingly cheap do let me know your thoughts guys are you going to be playing this one on the PC or no that's just something of course that is indeed I mean these, these are lining up but it's not official yet, so do take this with a pinch of salt despite all the evidence that we do have. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.